Not too long ago, when Xi Jinping was visiting San Francisco, a reporter asked Biden, do you still consider Xi Jinping a dictator? And Biden was like, Mr. President, after today, would you still refer to President Xi as a dictator? This is a term uh, that we used earlier this year. Well, look, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that... That was really a low blow for Xi Jinping, man. Before this, Biden had already called Xi a dictator at a fundraising event. As soon as this statement was made, public opinion immediately erupted. This was not specifically said to Xi Jinping. He said this when talking about the Chinese spy balloon incident. That's when Biden said, Xi Jinping is a dictator. He cannot obtain true information. He didn't even know about this balloon. And he certainly didn't know what exactly was on this balloon. He was simply speaking about uh, the loneliness and isolation of being a dictator and that no one dares to tell them the truth. However, he did say uh, during a formal speech that Xi Jinping is a dictator. So as soon as he said this, China immediately went from zero to 100. The Chinese embassy in the United States also issued a statement in protest. They were saying, America, this is nonsense. This kind of accusation is unacceptable. And uh, they also said, the United States must take responsibility for all possible political consequences in the future. A foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning was ordered to specifically criticize President Biden. The remarks made by the U.S. side are extremely absurd and highly irresponsible. They are a serious violation of basic facts, a serious violation of diplomatic etiquette, and a serious violation of China's political dignity. But there is one detail that is particularly interesting. I took a look at the first part of Mao Ning's speech and I couldn't see any of the questions asked. So I don't know if foreign journalists didn't ask any or if she spoke voluntarily, or it could be that the question was edited out. Secondly, Mao Ning's uh, speech has not been reported by any domestic media. According to a convention, the spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs responses to foreign journalists' questions uh, are usually broadcast again in the form of written transcripts in Chinese media. But this paragraph has been deleted why was it deleted? To be honest, it's quite interesting. Or oh, Biden accusing Xi Jinping of being a dictator itself cannot be reiterated. I have talked about it many times in the past. In a system like China, there are certain things that cannot be repeated, even if the public would oppose them. So the Chinese media does not want the Chinese people to know that Biden accused China's President Xi Jinping of being a dictator, even if you strongly oppose or protest against it. Why? There are two factors to consider regarding this. First, domestically, Xi Jinping is perceived as not only loved by the Chinese people, but also by the people of the entire world. For example, the Reference News newspaper mentions it every day. Xi Jinping has established the direction for the future development of China-US relations, the direction for the future development of humanity, China-EU relations, and the future exploration of outer space, etc. So Xi Jinping is not only beloved by the Chinese people, but also highly respected internationally. Uh, people are made to believe um, that around the world, everyone else also greatly admires, worships, and respects Xi Jinping. Chairman Xi is just such a huge deal. So huge. Chairman Xi is very meticulous, but he makes my body radiate with heat. We are not wearing much, but I still feel like it's hot. He gives off a very hot kind of feeling. It's so overwhelming that I can start crying tears of joy any second. Secondly, if the President of the United States were to accuse Xi Jinping of being a dictator, and the Chinese people were to find out about it, they would truly ponder whether Xi Jinping is indeed a dictator. The Chinese don't discuss this issue because, in fact, nobody considers it. Of course, it is also possible that some people out there are thinking about it, but if you come out and say he is a dictator, it will remind everyone to think about this issue. This is not acceptable. There is no news coverage about this in Chinese media. Even the online Chinese nationalist supporters have not come out to criticize President Biden. I believe that um, if any of them were to criticize President Biden on Weibo and said President Biden called Xi Jinping a dictator, I reckon that their account might be at risk and could possibly be suspended. To the ones that are watching now, if you don't believe me, you can try it yourself. You can try it out on Sina Weibo. Say that you strongly oppose President Biden's statement that Xi Jinping is a dictator. We absolutely do not agree. Then, please repeat the words of the spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's possible that your account will be gone. 
However, Biden's statement is still worth analyzing. This is the first time a sitting US president has criticized the Chinese national leader as a dictator. Back in the day, even though Chairman Mao was incredibly autocratic, no sitting US president ever called him a dictator because there is also an issue of basic diplomatic etiquette here. Although some countries have leaders who are scoundrels and rogues, which everyone knows. Generally speaking, it is rare for leaders of other countries to openly call them out. For example, everyone knows about Kim Jong-un, and it is certain that he is a dictator. However, even the President of the United States does not explicitly call Kim Jong-un a dictator in press conferences. They wouldn't say that, because after all, it's better to leave room for reconciliation. What if one day the President is shaking hands with Kim Jong-un, and you had just called him a dictator? It wouldn't be too good for the meeting. So generally, to uphold diplomatic etiquette, the president doesn't talk this way, even though sometimes they might truly believe it in their heart. It's like the former visit uh, of uh, Ceausescu to the UK. At that time, the UK had a request from Romania and hoped to sell them some airplanes or whatever. The British Queen and others didn't say that Ceausescu was a dictator. Of course, they knew it was true, but they wouldn't say it. She even held a state banquet and warmly welcomed him. It was later recalled that the Ceausescu couple were strolling in Buckingham Palace while the Queen of England happened to be walking her dog. When she saw them approaching, she didn't want to interact with them, so she took her dog and hid in the woods. She was also not able to say in diplomatic settings that Ceausescu was a dictator. So why did Biden say that Xi Jinping is a dictator? It's difficult for us to fully analyze this, but it has for sure attracted widespread attention. The Prime Minister of New Zealand said, I disagree with President Biden's statement. Why did he say this? Because if he agreed with Biden, obviously it wouldn't be too good for his upcoming meeting with China. So the Prime Minister of New Zealand said uh, Xi Jinping is not a dictator. That is the Chinese people's own affair. They will change if they want to. Uh, if they don't want to change, then we don't need to worry about it either. This is the standard reaction in most countries. Later, the White House said, We're not uh, bashful about speaking plainly uh, about some of the concerns and issues in, that we have with, uh, with the PRC and with the challenges that they uh, propose. And the, the president uh, is very forthright uh, in the way he addresses those challenges um, and the complicated nature of this relationship. And later, when, when facing questions from reporters, Biden also said, We had an incident that uh, caused uh, some uh, some confusion, you might say. But President, but the Secretary Blinken had a great trip to China. I expect to be meeting with President Xi sometime in the future, in the near term, and uh, I don't think it's had any real consequence. I just don't know what happened when Biden met with Xi Jinping. Would he have said, dude, I think you're a dictator, but let's continue to keep a good relationship going. Today, I want to discuss this topic and analyze it. Is Xi Jinping really a dictator? Because this issue is actually of great concern to many Chinese people. Here, first of all, we need to clarify how to define dictator. From a political science perspective, a dictator refers to a person who holds all the country's political power and possesses uh, absolute unconstrained authority. Generally speaking, we refer to this kind of person as a dictator. There are several concepts similar to dictators. First of all, one concept is despotism. Despotism refers to a political system in which a country's processes of governance are not democratic. It is monopolized by a certain political party, group, or family. In this system, it is possible for either an individual or a group of people to possess ultimate authority. There is also authoritarianism, such as in Singapore. We simply refer to it as an authoritarian regime. It is true that they also hold democratic elections, but in reality, it is the People's Action Party that has been in power for a long time. The opposition party in that country has also faced some setbacks. There are also several states that adhere to a democratic political system. Generally speaking, we believe that China's Communist Party system is considered an authoritarian regime, and there is little doubt about this. They do not allow other political parties to share power. There is also no way the common people can restrain and supervise them through an established system. Their power is basically absolute, but you're asking if the, the leaders of the Chinese Communist Party are all dictators. I think this is not necessarily true. 
For example, everyone knows that Mao Zedong is definitely considered a dictator. Agree or disagree? Those who agree, raise your hand. In my own opinion, I don't think uh, Deng Xiaoping can be considered a dictator. Then, uh, with Jiang, Jiang Zemin and Hu Jintao, uh, I think it is even less likely for me to consider them as dictators. Of course, so some people may also consider them as dictators, saying, as long as someone is a member of the Chinese Communist Party, how can they not be a dictator? And then it comes to Xi Jinping. How do we determine uh, if he is a dictator or not? First of all, uh, let me explain the historical context a bit. During the Great Leap Forward, tens of millions of people starved to death nationwide. Then Peng Dehuai attempted to criticize Mao's erroneous policies during the Lushan Conference. What was the outcome? Um, these people were all labeled as counter-revolutionary groups. Until the Cultural Revolution, Mao had reached the peak of his power and had become a god instead of man. All the country's decisions were determined by his own arbitrary and impulsive actions one after another. So Mao himself is a dictator, I think it should be said without any doubt. After China's reform and opening up, Deng Xiaoping came to power. Um, um, it can be said that Deng was one of the biggest victims of Mao Zedong's feudal patriarchal system. Of course, it wasn't just him, but also included other people within the party, such as Chen Yun, Li Xianyan, and Ye Jianying. They all deeply resented Mao Zedong's uh, feudalistic and authoritarian methods of control. So Deng proposed to abolish the lifelong tenure system for leaders. He wanted to establish a collective leadership. And he was going to transform the political bureau back into a collective decision-making mechanism of the Chinese Communist Party. Whether it was nine people or seven people, uh, it didn't matter. When dealing with important matters, decisions should be made by these people through voting, rather than being determined by one person. In, in my opinion, after the establishment of this system, it would be difficult to define the subsequent political leaders as absolute dictators, who Yao Bang Zhao Ziyang, uh, Jiang Zemin, and Hu Jintao all actually did have constraints from within the party. During the Bo Xilai incident, there was a detail that when Wang Lijun fled to the US consulate, the members of the Politburo Standing Committee were having a meeting discussing how to handle Bo Xilai. It is said that initially some members of the Standing Committee believed that Wang Lijun should be dealt with, while Bo Xilai should remain. However, both Wen Jiabao and Xi Jinping strongly disagreed with the idea and believed that Bo Xilai should also be decisively removed. At this point, Xi was still only the General Secretary of China. Um, the final result of the vote went in their favor. When I read this detail, I feel at that point, there was still a collective decision-making system among the Communist Party's top leadership at that time. One person did not have the final say. So I believe that whether it is Hu Jintou or Zhang Zemin, they cannot simply be defined as dictators. It is a very strange system. It involves being one of the collective leaders in a dictatorial regime. Of course, they have more power than the average person. However, they did not have absolute power. There were still some forces within the party that could constrain their actions. When Xi Jinping came to power, however, we started to see that the situation was slowly changing in the past decade, this system has been fundamentally disrupted, such as the term limits being removed. Deng Xiaoping abolished the lifelong system for leaders, but Xi Jinping reinstated it again by amending the constitution. So even the rule of consecutive selection and re-election for one term has been dismantled. How many more years will he continue to serve in the future? We simply don't know. What is even more important is that he abolished the tradition of the communist party members uh, designating a successor from the next generation. The other factions within the party no longer exist. Do you think it is appropriate for President Xi to be re-elected for several terms after five years? Uh, um, this, this... Will there be lifelong rule? How many terms do you think he should serve? So, do you think there are effective mechanisms to supervise and constrain this power, including President Xi's power? This question, um... On the other hand, you can you can see that uh, Xi Jinping now has complete control within the party without any other forces that can restrain him. What's more important is that you can see that he is trying to glorify himself through various means. A while ago, um, I did a program talking about how Xi Jinping has published many works. 
This practice is an attempt to make himself uh, seem larger than life. Now, do you think Xi Jinping himself has such great literary talent and profound wisdom being expressed in his works? It's not like that at all. He uses this to brainwash people into constantly accepting that Xi Jinping is an absolute authority and to insinuate people are not allowed to take him lightly. Questioning him is even more off limits. Mao used quotations from Chairman Mao, uh, also known as the Little Red Book, as a means of continuously brainwashing uh, people back in the day. Now Xi Jinping is also doing this kind of thing, so from my personal perspective, when you ask if Xi is a dictator, I believe he is. He is indeed a dictator. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Those who disagree, please raise your hand. Nobody! Nobody disagrees! It's passed. However, after Xi Jinping became a dictator, he brought a great deal of uncertainty to Chinese society. First is his unconstrained exercise of power. This makes many of his decisions prone to becoming significant mistakes. If it weren't for Mao's absolute dictatorial rule and the mistakes of the Great Leap Forward, the Cultural Revolution might have been avoided. But Xi is the same. Everyone should think about the three-year epidemic prevention measures that just ended last year. Especially in the last year, the, if the epidemic prevention measures were developed by collective leadership, they, they wouldn't have made such crazy policies. Because at that time, many professionals actually pointed out that Xi's approach was wrong. If we could have a set of decision-making mechanisms within the party, the probability of making such mistakes would be greatly reduced. But unfortunately, there is no such mechanism anymore. No one can easily restrain him anymore. So you can see, on one hand, ordinary people were suffering immensely in the process of being locked down, having their movements restricted, um, and constantly undergoing PCR tests. On the other hand, having this unmalleable decision-making mechanism means that as long as he does not change his mind, no one else can change the direction of the country. A few days ago, the Ministry of Civil Affairs released the statistics for the fourth quarter of last year. There is one item from within these data that is particularly interesting. The column for the number of cremations in the fourth quarter is empty. Um, it was present in the first three quarters, but it was absent in the fourth quarter. Uh, at that time, uh, I was still considering doing this topic, but I felt like I couldn't delve too deeply into it. Let's discuss it here. Why can't the number of deaths from COVID-19 be announced for this fourth quarter? It is because the fourth quarter happened to be the first one or two months when the epidemic just started to break out. Do you all still remember when the Health Commission used to announce the daily infection and death numbers from all over the country? Later, after revising the death toll, it was said that more than 50,000 people died from the virus nationwide during that period. But when this data was released, no one believed it. The international scientific community generally estimates the actual number to be between 1 million and 2 million. At that time, due to the medical supply shortages, people couldn't buy medicine. Many people who got infected lost their lives due to various complications. So many people were looking forward to the release of the fourth quarter death toll by the Ministry of Civil Affairs to see if the data is significantly higher than the previous three quarters. By analyzing that statistic, you can figure out the true number of deaths. However, this data was missing and was not to be published. When I saw it at that time, uh, I found it particularly interesting because the data from the Ministry of Civil Affairs is genuine and you can't easily tamper with it. So it is possible that the Ministry of Civil Affairs was using this method to protest against such flawed epidemic prevention measures. So why is it like this? Isn't it simply because China's current decision-making system is completely controlled by one person? When he refuses to change, no one can change any aspect of a policy's implementation. That's the first point. As for the second point, uh, I think what Biden said is also quite important. When a dictator falls into absolute power, he will inevitably enter a state where he cannot discern the true information of the country because no one dares to tell him the truth, as the truth is not pleasant to hear. And if it doesn't sound good, it might just upset this dictator. In the event that the dictator is not pleased, it is totally possible to bring unfavorable consequences upon oneself. 
So the final result is that everyone will speak well of him in front of him. They will speak the words he loves to hear. Isn't this what Chairman Mao's later years were like? It is unbelievable to think that the extremely absurd period of the Cultural Revolution lasted for 10 years, but during that era of Mao, no one dared to tell Mao that all of this was not normal. And yet, Mao Zedong was still uh, immersed in what he believed to be a great experiment to transform this country. Will Xi Jinping fall into this same situation? I think he will. This is the loneliness of a dictator. This is the grief of a dictator. All dictators will eventually fall into this kind of logic. So why is dictatorship itself so terrifying? It's for this very reason. Actually, I, again, I think that generally speaking, Chinese people do not have a strong resistance to authoritarianism. During the authoritarian rule of the Chinese Communist Party in the past few decades, the economy has been doing quite well. Uh, people feel that Although the lack of shared political power may not be ideal, they can still tolerate it. But dictators are particularly unbearable. Why? Once a dictator makes a mistake, the aftermath is truly insane. In other words, in today's political life in China, the harm caused by dictatorship is far greater than that of political authoritarianism. The third aspect is the reason behind it. After Deng Xiaoping abolished the lifelong tenure system for leaders, this had been implemented for 30 to 40 years. And then, in the era of Xi Jinping, everything came to a sudden halt and returned to the era of dictatorship. I think the most fundamental reason is that the entire system of the Chinese Communist Party is not based on rigid constraints, but rather on soft constraints. You can take, for example, the appointment of leaders across generations. This has never been a system, but it has always been a tradition within their party. And this tradition itself may be abolished when you encounter a political powerhouse like Xi Jinping. Another more important issue uh, is that outside of the Chinese Communist Party, there is actually a lack of constraints on the party's own power. This country has a constitution, but can this constitution constrain the Communist Party? There's no way. This country has courts, but these courts cannot restrain the Communist Party either. So all the systems within the Communist Party depend on the power struggle within the party itself. When a political powerhouse emerges, the internal system of the Communist Party itself loses its regulatory power over them. Moreover, a political party like the Communist Party, which has inherent authoritarian characteristics, is even more vulnerable. It has that kind of mentality of admiring strength, hoping for a politically dominant leader. And then this kind of political leader can help them solve problems that they believe are impossible to solve. The Communist Party itself carries a sort of hereditary trait of dictatorship. So after 40 years, this system re-emerged. Old colleagues should make way. Choose a successor carefully. This is of great significance and lasting importance. It is a strategic issue for us. We need to have a nation. We have the people and we have the party. The plenary session has accepted my retirement request. Thank you wholeheartedly to the plenary session. I sincerely thank you, comrades. Finally, what I want to say is that Mao's 30-year dictatorial rule in China has brought about extremely profound and extremely painful disasters to Chinese society. What about Xi? What will Xi bring to China in the future? Nobody knows for certain. I hope that the social disasters of the Mao era will not be once again brought upon the Chinese society. Of course, we can only hope for it. Democracies have become stronger, not weaker. Autocracy has grown weaker, not stronger. Name me a world leader who changed places with Xi Jinping. Name me one. Name me one. 美方有关言论极其荒谬，极不负责，是公开的政治挑衅。The plenary session has accepted my retirement request. Thank you wholeheartedly to the plenary session. I sincerely thank you, comrades. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those who disagree, please raise your hand. Nobody, nobody disagrees. 
it's past. Do you think it is appropriate for President Xi to be re-elected for several terms after five years? Uh, um, this, this... Will there be lifelong rule? How many terms do you think he should serve? So, do you think there are effective mechanisms to supervise and constrain this power, including President Xi's power? This question, um, 